This is a jam-packed with fire trail on this one. So fire trail number four for Ish. So a couple of things. First one, before we even see it, is when we let the dog go to track, we actually want to stand still up until the point where all of the leash is out and we see the dog's committed to odor. Now that's not too relevant to what we're doing here because we're moving really quickly and this is sort of tracking for filming, but free, free uh, advice there is when we're working a track where we actually don't know where the track is, is you want to stand still, let all leash out, and let the dog show you when they've actually picked up on the track. Now, this is a really, really awesome, awesome fire trail. Now, what we see here is, um, right now, as we see Ish coming off to the right of the track. Look, it's a bit warm. I think you got a slight breeze there as well. So there's a little bit of blown odor over here. What I love is that Ish makes their way back to the left and closer to the you know, more uh, concentrated odor and then picks their way even more accurately in uh, right onto almost the track line where you can see this snap here and straight into the track layer. Really, really beautiful work by Ish. Got a great nose on them. Pretty amazing for the fourth fire trail for a nine-year-old Labrador. Beautiful work. Great, so rolling into fire trail number five. Now, a little bit of advice here is pretty much the same as uh, to the last one. So when we let the dog go, um, we just want to stand still, let all that leash out as we don't want our physical uh, presence to push the dog in a direction where they might not necessarily go um, because they're very responsive to our body language. Also too, really cool, that little pop right there, that little head sniff, that little snap to the left there, that is all the dog actually needs to take odor from a scent article. Uh, they don't need to dig their nose in there deeply or anything like that. It's nice when they do, it looks cool, gives you a good feeling. But as far as pure practical taking odor goes, that is all a dog actually needs. Now, moving up to this bit here, really good job standing still and being patient and letting Ish work it out. That's exactly what you should do. Uh, the only difference is here is I would be standing still and letting all that leash out. Um, let the leash do the walking for you. Uh, and when you see the dog commits through their change of behavior in their body language, then start moving with the dog. Um, it was pretty clear. Um, but I do still like to give dogs lots of room to move by being at the end of the leash as much as possible. Uh, but again, really nice job here. Ish is fantastic at working their way as close as possible to the track line. Another great little fire trail. So unfortunately, for some reason, I think it's my computer and not the file, um, I couldn't actually upload the third video into my video editing software as it kept glitching. Um, but obviously I've had a look at it. Uh, overall, really nice, really smart move to end on a really simple fire trail that was really short for Ish, um, given that it was hot and she was getting a little bit tired, but she is doing really amazing for a nine-year-old dog, that's for sure. Um, the only thing I would say about it is if you watch it back, be cautious of where you site your fire trails, because for Ish, they were able to see the track layer almost like a significant part of the way that the track layer went what you really want to have is essentially when that hat drops at that point is when the dog should no longer be able to see the track layer you know live to your imagination how you do that it could be around the corner of a tree long grass so on and so forth but you don't want the dog to see them uh, for much more than a couple more meters at most after the hat drops um but Look, we're moving really nicely through this and let's get into what we're going to do for the next steps. Great, so I'll keep it really succinct for the next round. So we want to do three things in the next round, uh, which I think Ish is going to be up to task. We're going to give it a red hot go. The first one is for you, Remy, your leash handling. So what I want you to do is to, as much as possible, work at the end of the leash. So make sure you're hanging on to the very end of it and Ish has all of the line in front of you to work with. Hand in glove with that is make sure you've got sort of gentle tension on the leash. So you're not slowing down, you're not a boat anchor for Ish, you're moving with Ish but just maintain a gentle tension. If in doubt as well of what I mean, go and check out some of my recent videos of uh, myself tracking with Gaston uh, and you'll get a good visual representative of what I mean by that. The next part of that as well is if Ish is working um, and sort of heads back towards you as they're solving a problem, for example, all you do is stand still, reel the leash in like you're fishing, and then when Ish works their way out, then you let all the leash out, and when you're at the end of the leash, you move with the dog. 
Next point about that one is make sure you move with the dog and don't accidentally jerk the dog. Um, that can feel like a correction for them, so make sure you're not um, slow, basically, um, to find balance. But you'll get used to it. I think you'll get there really quickly. You've clearly got really nice leash handling skills um, to begin with. The next bit is let's double the distance um, and keep those straights. Um, that will make it a bit easier, I believe, for the filming to get some nice long segments of um, ish working, which will look really good. And the third thing is we're going to move on to what we call modified fire trails, um, which we're going to keep very brief. What does that mean? It means your start is exactly the same as what you've been doing, except as soon as the track layer is run off, um, you know, five, ten seconds later, you simply take ish, walk away, so essentially breaking visual contact, and then bring ish back. And then when you're a couple meters away from the article, that's when you stand still and give the slack of the leash. And again, you just allow ish to figure it out for themselves. And when they lock onto the track, you start moving with them again. Um, it's a pretty big step up, but from what I've seen so far, I got a good feeling ish will do quite well. And the uh, I like there's a fourth thing. The fourth thing is there's no need to do three of these. Uh, potentially just do uh, one really good one or two really good ones. And if Ish is getting tired, call it there. Um, but overall, really, really great work. And I look forward to seeing the next rounds this week. Okay, I lied. I've got one more thing to add. When you're doing the modified fire trails at the start, when the track layer is agitating Ish, make sure your leash is attached to the collar. Um, once they run off, that's cool. When you move away, um, as you're bringing Ish back towards the article, but still a solid, at least a few meters before the article, change Ish over from the collar to the harness. Now, this isn't some magic trick that teaches the dogs how to track all of a sudden. This is just a type of cue that I really like the dogs I train to have because I find when you do this repetitively, it becomes a very, very powerful um, signal to the dog of what they're then expected to do. It's very similar to putting the harness on the dog for a detection dog. Sounds familiar, right? Um, this is part of that for ritual for the tracking stuff. Um, this is what I like to do, and it works really, really nicely in the long run. So um, let's incorporate that into the next couple of uh, fire trials.